Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking time out of your day to sit down and watch my unboxing uh, video for the Alien role-playing game starter set. Um, I recorded the, the video that you're about to watch the same day that I first picked the setup, uh, which for a little bit of information's sake uh, was the same day that we were expecting a hurricane to hit the province. So I kind of rushed a little bit uh, through the the video in terms of like my thoughts and I was trying to do a proper review even though I hadn't had a lot of time to spend with the set itself so I kind of decided that it might be a good idea just to do this little blurb here at the beginning to let you know that this is really more of a first impressions video and I will be doing a more proper review of the alien role-playing game system uh, in a little bit. Uh, I do have a copy of the core rulebook uh, heading my way. Uh, it's just not here yet, and uh, once I get that, I can you know, do a little bit more detailed analysis of the rule set. So that's something that is on the way, uh, but I still think that the video that I recorded um, will be perfectly fine for uh, an unboxing. Hopefully it's all right. Uh, I considered re-recording re -recording the whole thing, but honestly, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to go through in the next little while, so I think this just works a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, I will do a proper review for the system as a whole uh, in a very, very short <laughs> time span once I get that core rulebook and have a little bit more time to sit down and read through everything. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, so thank you again. Hopefully you understand, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Alien Role-Playing Game Starter Set. Uh, this was put out by Free League Publishing, and uh, they have actually sent this to me for the purposes of doing a review. Um, so I just want to make that uh, transparent or clear at the beginning of uh, this video. So this was a product that was sent to me. Uh, but Free League Publishing, like the other companies that I've dealt with, are not uh, requiring a particular review in terms of what I say or how I uh, discuss it like with the, if I give it a good review or not uh, and they're not pre-screening the video before it goes out so as always the opinions that I express in this video are 100% completely and totally my own. Now the Alien franchise is something that has been a pretty big part of my life for well a very very long time. Uh, the Alien movies especially the first three or particularly the first the first three are among my favorite movies of all time. Um, I will constantly go back and watch them. I try to watch the, the first three movies at least once a year. I know three has its issues, but I absolutely love it. And it was the first R-rated movie that I ever rented, uh, or that was rented for me because I was way too young uh, to watch it at the time. But um, hey, it, you know, I did, and I think I turned out all right. Uh, so yeah, so this is something that I was really, really interested in and really looking forward to uh, to getting a hold of because, like I said, I love starter sets, I love box sets, and I love, you know, the Alien series. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, so the U.S. retail price for this, I want to say, is between $35.99 and $39.99. Uh, I will put the actual price um, on the in the description of the video, as well as a link to Free League Publishing's website, so you can check out some of the cool stuff that they have there. Uh, this box set contains a 104-page rule book with the uh, the fast rules that you need, um, or fast and effective rule set designed specifically to support the core themes of the Alien uh, role-playing game or the Alien franchise, which is horror into action in the cold darkness of space. There is a 48-page scenario called Chariot of the Gods by sci-fi novelist Andrew E.C. Uh, e. Gaska, uh, taking you on a thrilling, terror-filled ride into deep space where no one can hear you scream. Uh, comes with five pre-generated characters for you to play, a huge full-color double-sided map. Uh, one side depicts chartered space in the year 2183, and the other the floor plans that you use for the Chariot of the Gods scenario. It comes with 84 game markers, little cardboard tokens for keeping track of characters, motion tracker pings, and more. Uh, 56 high-quality custom cards showing weapons, personal agendas, uh, initiative in combat, as well as some of the NPCs included in here. 
and it comes with 20 six-sided dice, uh, 10 of which are your base dice. Uh, they're, you know, we'll show them right here in a second. And then you also get 10 stress dice, uh, and they are designed specifically for uh, the alien role-playing game. So let's just have a look here. We'll just pop this open. Uh, I have already opened this earlier in the day. Um, I was just uh, too, too excited to wait uh, for the actual <laughs> video. Uh, but here we go. So here we have our cards. So we'll just, I just used one of the missus's hair ties because the regular elastics rubber bands I find have a tendency to like, you know, melt <laughs> and become really gummy. So I don't want that happening here. Uh, so we have personal agenda cards. So this is designed specifically for the characters presented in this scenario. So these are sort of agenda uh, well, agendas, clearly, but these are uh, op options for the players to sort of pursue. These are goals for them to look at. Uh, and there's different, you know, things that you would look for. Um, for example, some of the uh, some of the agendas involve you just trying to get as much money as you possibly can uh, out of what's going on. Some may you know, have you focus on survival at all costs. And one of the characters has the potential to actually be a an android character um, operating in secret um, for you know the company. Uh, and has their own goals, which do not involve the player characters. Think Ash from Alien, um, or I guess you could think of like David from the more recent movies. Um, although I would rather think of Ash from the original Alien. Uh, we also have our NPC cards. So these are just the non-player characters that you can encounter uh, throughout the scenario here. And it also gives their statistics on the other side of the card. So again, these are great aids for the game master to have or the person running the game to have as well as if one of the players dies there's a chance that they could take over one of the non-player characters to keep them involved in the game uh, we also have our initiative cards so in this system the way you determine initiative is you should shuffle these cards up and you have the players draw them uh, they're simply numbered one through ten and each player draws one and each combatant also draws them uh, if you're using multiple creatures then you may want to consider um, you may want to consider having you know uh, each group of like individuals drawing just the one card. But it, you know this com the combat here isn't quite the same as you might think of in like fantasy RPGs. So uh, ten cards should be more than enough uh, initiative for everyone to take their turns. And then we just have these weapon cards. Uh, so equipment cards to show just some of the different uh, guns that are available. On one side, including the smart gun, which I really loved from Aliens, the pulse rifle, another classic one. And on the other side, it just gives their statistics. So you know what the what the weapon does uh, for damage, for like bonus dice, for making your rolls with, range, weight, and how much it's worth. Um, because if you lose them, then the company might want to take it out of your salary because that's just the way that they operate. Uh, we also have this games catalog for 2020 from Free League Publishing. Uh, so it should show some of the other RPGs that they have. So here we have, you know, obviously the Alien RPG, which makes sense. Uh, Forbidden Lands. Tales from the Loop. And then we have uh, Sim... Symborum, Symborium, I don't know, and uh, uh, Vason, uh, Mutant Year Zero, and uh, Corollis. So yeah, again, it's just a lot of, uh, they have a lot of different um, products that they put out, which is really, really cool. So again, if you're interested in any of those, uh, check out the link in the description, uh, provided that I remember to put the link in. And if I forget to put the link in, uh, please remind me and I will get right on that. Uh, so here we have our D6. Uh, they're just regular six-sided dice, numbered one through six. Uh, however, you will see that the six has this sort of uh, symbol on it here. And essentially what that means is it uh, counts as a success on a roll. Uh, it's sort of a skill-based system, um, like attributes. It reminds me a little bit of Star Wars, like Edge of the Empire, or even Star Trek Adventures, uh, but a little bit more simplified. Um, you roll a number of dice based on your skill and the attributes connected to, and you need to get at least one success in order to, uh, to for the skill to actually succeed. 
And uh, multiple successes can have other effects, like um, they could, if it's a weapon, it might deal extra damage. Uh, or if you are, uh, if you're getting hit by a weapon, your armor, you roll these dice for it, and whichever one is a success reduces the damage. Um, it's sort of a versatile, uh, versatile system. And if you're doing opposed rolls, whoever has more of these uh, would consider would you know be considered to win. So if two people are trying to like grapple each other, uh, whoever has the more success dice uh, will actually end up you know being the person that comes out on top of the grapple. So that's really, really cool there. And then we have the stress dice. Uh, so stress in this system isn't necessarily as bad as it might seem, although it is kind of bad. Uh, so stress, you add extra dice for, again, they're numbered one through six. Uh, so they do give you extra chances to succeed. Uh, you know, you basically, some the idea is that the extra stress or pressure um, is sort of a motivating factor to try to get you to accomplish your goals. However, you can see the one dice, or the one side here on the dice, get it to focus, has a little face hugger logo on it, and I love that. <laughs> I just love the way that it looks. Uh, so if you end up getting one of those, it essentially means that you run the risk of uh, going into a panic. So the stress basically just gets to you and causes you to sort of uh, uh, break at least temporarily. And, you know, the more stress you have, the more of these dice that you roll, the better chance that you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to, uh, you know, roll to try to keep your composure and not panic. So we'll just get the other contents out here. So here we have our tokens. So you just sort of see what they are here. Uh, things like target lock, sensors, maneuver, uh, fire weapon, and then just different creature ones that you can use if you need to. Different ones for player characters, looks like, as well. So, again, can be useful if you are using, uh, like, a grid type of thing. Now, the way that it works is you sort of move by sectors, which, again, reminds me of the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game, which is fine. Uh, it's just a simplified way of, of maneuvering around. Uh, but it's still, you know, it works really well. Certain things may be able to move more than one sector, which is sort of like a, like a tile um, or a certain size of, like, the grid on the, on the map. Uh, so yeah, so we got those. And then we have our double-sided map, and the cardstock actually feels really, really nice. Uh, I'm not going to fold it, um, unfold it completely here, but we do have our uh, core systems. And I haven't found it on the map yet, but I... Uh, oh no, wait, here, it's right there. Uh, see if I get it. It's funny, I just, I finally found it. But there is LV4... 26 LB426 was from Alien and Aliens, and uh, yeah, it's just really, really cool. And then, um, yeah, so then we have the core systems, which I'm assuming would include, like, the uh, Earth. Yeah, so you got Soul there, which I think is, uh, which is our solar system. But anyway, that's really, really cool. And then on the other side, we just have the deck plans for the, uh, the ship that the characters encounter in the scenario. Speaking of the characters, we have our five pre-generated characters here. So we have sort of what looks like the uh, the character sheet on one side. Um, so it gives you their name, their you know career, um, again who their you know friend or rival might be, uh, stress level, so you can keep track of you know stress, your health, um, if you're suffering from radiation, um, story points, which works for at least in the context of this. Uh, you get story points if you succeed on one of your personal agendas, and you can use you can spend it to essentially get a success on a check. Uh, so we have that, and we have our four attributes. So we've got uh, strength, wits, empathy, and agility, and each of those attributes also has three skills that are attached to it. So there's sort of a specialization. So strength would be like close combat or stamina. Uh, wits would be observation, survival, or communications technology. Uh, empathy uh, works with uh, medical uh, manipulation and com making you know, like command, so uh, to sort of uh, make your presence felt. And then agility is range combat, mobility, and your ability to pilot the ship. Uh, so the way that this works, uh, so let's just say this character in particular uh, was going to make a ranged combat attack, so they were trying to fire their sidearm at someone. Uh, you take the number of your skill, which in this case is one. 
as you can see there. So we got one and then you add it to the agility stat because they are connected to those uh, to this here. And so you would roll five dice in total. Uh, so let's actually do that right now just so you sort of see what it looks like. Again, I hope at some point what might actually be kind of neat would be to do an actual uh, gameplay on the channel uh, or someone's channel. So we'll see how that works out. But so let's just say we're making our ranged attack. Uh, so here we have the fact that I failed to roll a single success. So let's just say the next round. So here we actually have a couple successes. Uh, so that means that uh, one of these means that the attack hit and I can use the second one, for example, to have it deal extra damage or other effects. Each skill um, has a description of what you can do with extra successes. So that's kind of cool. And again, if you have stress, you would add that um, number of dice, whatever your stress level is, to that roll. So again, it gives you a better chance to succeed, uh, but it also gives you a better chance to uh, fly into a panic. And then on the other side, we actually have uh, like a headshot of the character, like sort of like their corporate profile. You got the Whale and Yutani logo on the bottom there. Um, you know, their personality type. Uh, and their their talents, so whatever sort of unique ability that each character has, it gives you the description there. Uh, it also gives you the relevant information uh, here as well. Uh, so, for example, if I were running this as the GM, as an NPC, then I would probably just focus on this side uh, rather than the other. But that's pretty cool. So here we have uh, John J. Wilson. And then we have uh, Liron Cham, uh, Le or Lee Leia uh, Davis, Vanessa Miller, and Kyla Ray. So those are the characters that the players can choose from. And again, any one of those could also, in theory, be. Uh, secret android like Ash from the original Alien. Uh, here we have the adventure, Chariot of the Gods. Uh, so this is the scenario that you play through. Um, so and this actually is a very, uh, very interesting scenario. So um, I still have to read through at least a little bit of it, but skimming through it, I really like this actually. It's a very good blend of the original Alien and like uh, Alien Covenant, but in a way that actually I find interesting. Uh, Alien Covenant was not the greatest, um, in my opinion, which is unfortunate because I think there were people that had uh, high expectations or higher expectations for it. Uh, but the story here has the characters emerging from hypersleep. They're, you know, getting ready to ship some cargo uh, to one of the outer colonies. When they awake, they think that they're there, but they find that they're in the middle of space because they found a distress signal um, that was being sent from the ship. Uh, the ship is, like I said, about 80 years old, which uh, puts it, uh, considering that this takes place after, like, Alien 3, uh, the amount of time back that the ship was, uh, that the, the derelict ship was from, uh, puts it around the time of Prometheus and uh, Alien Covenant. Uh, so the characters make their way to the ship, they explore it, and they find, like, the spore pods from Covenant, as well as, you know, um, neo, um, Neomorphs, and the uh, the characters, uh, the NPCs, the crew of the ship, um, are transforming into, like, the abominations, like what we had, like, the zombie character in Alien Covenant. But it, like I said, it's just, it's a more interesting and compelling adventure or story involving those uh, creature types than the actual movies. And I think that that's something that I feel is going to be a strength of the Alien RPG, especially their scenarios, is that they just, you know, do a better job capturing the feel of the Alien franchise than the recent movies have even come close to trying to accomplish. So, uh, like, reading the scenario, I, you know, was just thinking to myself, it's like, this would actually make a better movie than either Prometheus or... Um, or a covenant, so it just kind of got me excited, and uh, this is something I can definitely see myself running. Uh, it is designed to be sort of run as a one shot, uh, so you could probably do it in a single like three to four hour session. Uh, the box says about two hours, but I feel like you'd want to uh, sort of stretch things out a little bit, um, build up a bit more tension, and uh, let the characters maybe explore a bit more, interact a bit more. Uh, but yeah, really excited about uh, this scenario here. And again, the uh, the artwork is just fantastic, which is something that I've noticed throughout the entire uh, starter set. So here we have the core, or not the core, we have the rule book 
from the starter set. Uh, now what's interesting about the way that the Alien role-playing game is designed, um, and it's just sort of, it's a clever justification for like box sets being, you know, like the scenarios that they are. Um, so you have, uh, you can have the campaign play, which is sort of your standard uh, role-playing campaign where the players each make their characters and they take those characters through several scenarios and a you know overarching longer running storyline um i kind of think of like you know i would consider ripley from the first three movies and uh, alien resurrection um but i kind of think of her is like a campaign style character because you know she actually had a long-term story um, so you can have that and you need the core rule book in order to do that so the character creation rules are in the core rule book but the starter set, and there's another box set coming out as well um, that I will be doing a video on uh, shortly uh, as well. These are called cinematic um, game, uh, cin cinematic games, or cin cinematic scenarios. And uh, they're designed to sort of more mimic um, what an individual movie might be like. So, for example, Covenant, um, as flawed as it was, um, it feels more like a standalone story than the first, you know, couple of Alien movies. Uh, so the idea behind that, though, the thing that I like about that is, so the cinematic ones give you pre-generated characters, um, and they'll give you things like your uh, personal agenda cards, so there are different things that uh, each of the characters would want to do versus a campaign play where you probably, all the characters are probably aligned in their goals and there's not like these secrets being kept from everyone uh so i you know that's sort of a difference but the other thing is that the cinematic style adventures or scenarios um only require the core rule or the, the only require the rule book from the starter set in order to actually run them that, so that means that this rule book can be useful with the other box sets that come out or other scenarios that are released. Um, meaning that this book has value beyond just the Chariot of the Gods adventure. And that is fantastic. Um, so I really like that. I also like the system from what I'm seeing so far. Um, it's, uh, it, it's something that looks like it's gonna be super lethal because your characters only have a certain number of hit points. Uh, but the way that it works is if you're reduced to zero, then you roll for like a major injury and those could be treated um, or you could, you know, if you get one bad enough, it can result in death. But I don't know, it's just sort of an interesting system. I'll talk more about it in a separate review when I get the, when I actually get the core rule book that I keep inadvertently saying in this video. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really impressed with this uh, rule book here. I also really love the fact that it uses artwork um, for these books. Uh, now, Free League uh, Publishing could have easily, easily taken screenshots from the Alien movies, and I wouldn't have blamed them. I wouldn't have expected anything more, um, and other licensed RPGs or licensed products have done that. Uh, so like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have held it against them, but the fact of the matter is that this is all artwork. So like, I don't, there's not a single movie screenshot in this rule book, which I was really, really impressed by. And uh, like I said, I like the rule system. It's, uh, it's simple, um, but there's a lot that you can do with it. And it's honestly less intimidating to me to try to, to, to read through and figure this system out than something like Star Trek Adventures or like the Star Wars uh, role-playing game where you've got all these different types of dice with these weird symbols on, you know, multiple sides. And uh, so this one feels a little bit more approachable um, for someone like me who's only run, you know, things based off of like, um, you know, the more like the, the Dungeons and Dragons or D20 system types of uh, role-playing games. So yeah, this is something that I think will be uh, a lot easier or a, a, at least a lot less intimidating uh, to try to pick up and learn. And I'm excited, like I'm really interested in this system. So that's my look at the starter set. Uh, like I said, you get a lot of stuff in here. I mean, the, the dice alone, you get 20, 20 dice. Uh, you get a really, really interesting scenario, some cool characters to play, uh, some twists that those characters can sort of uh, have as well. There's just a lot of, uh, of value uh, crammed into this box set. So if you're interested in the alien role-playing game, uh, then this is something that I highly recommend you check out. So it, it's just, it's a really, 
really well done uh, Strider set, and it's one that I would put uh, on the uh, the upper tiers of my list of favorite Strider sets from all the different ones that I have. Um, I love the fact that the rule book itself um, is something that can be used beyond just this particular box set, uh, meaning that the it has value beyond just the one session that you're going to run with it. Um, <clears throat> at least the one scenario that you're going to run from this particular box. So I think that that's great. And uh, yeah, it's just a really interesting system overall. So uh, let me know if any of you have actually played the Alien role-playing game, what your experiences with it were, and what your thoughts on the uh, the system are. And uh, Or if you had no idea this was out, uh, let me know that as well. Uh, because one of the things that I really hope to do is help raise awareness of uh, maybe some of the more obscure uh, role-playing games uh, that are of um, you know, like an interest to me in terms of licenses or whatnot. So anyway, uh, I highly recommend it if you're into um, the Alien franchise and RPGs. I, I think this is going to be a really decent one, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to what's to come in the future uh, from Free League as well. I'm really excited. So th again, thank, th uh, thank you to Free League Publishing for sending this out to me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps generate at least a few sales for you guys, because uh, this is really, really cool. Uh, if you want a closer look at the maps, I did take pictures of them on my Instagram page. Uh, I might actually redo those as well, because I was uh, kind of uh, pressed for time when I was uh, taking the pictures. So uh, I might redo those. But uh, again, you'll get a closer look uh, on there. And there'll be a link to that in the description as well, again, and as well as a link to the Free League Publishing website. If you want to check out uh, some of the various RPGs that they have, um, because there's more than just the alien one there. There's a lot of cool stuff that looks like they're serving. So uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care.